In this video, we are going to learn how to make your collections of data prettier than ever. We are going to look at data templates. So you can use your data templates in list views, collection views, um, carousel views, basically all controls in Xamarin Forms that will allow you to show collections of data. There is an important note about the list view and data templates. So make sure you watch the video all the way through the end to catch it all. Um, but let's just dive in and see how we can do all of this. So for this demo, it's a little bit different than usual. Uh, I have still taken the file new Xamarin Forms application, uh, but this time I've already prepared a little bit of code. So as you can see, I've removed all the labels here that are normally here whenever you start a new application from Visual Studio for Mac 2019 or Visual Studio 2019 on Windows. Um, and I've put in a collection view, uh, which already binds to uh, a monkeys object uh, as an item source. So we are going to to show a list of monkeys. I'll show you in a little bit. Um, and actually, if we go to the code behind for this page, then you can see I've implemented some stuff here as well. Um, I already have in place a observable collection for monkeys. So that is where our monkeys are collected. And this will serve as the item source for our collection view. So this is basically the data backing store um, for our collection view. This goes into a little bit of like the data binding stuff. Um, if you're interested in more of that or you're struggling with that, please let me know in the comments and I will create a video uh, more specifically to that, to whatever your situation is. Uh, I've already also created a HTTP client right here that I'm going to use. And in the main page, I'm setting the binding context to this, which means that for this full page, um, it will look for like, you know, you could see here in our example, it was uh, just saying binding monkeys. So that means for this whole page, the binding context is uh, the code behind for this. And um, it's referencing now this monkey. So setting the binding context to this page, to this object, uh, set it to the main page right here, um, enables me to just say binding um, and then the property name. So in this case, monkeys, and it will automatically know where to look for in um, the binding context, what to bind to. Again, this is all uh, has to do with data binding. So if this is something that you have difficulties with, um, then please let me know and I will make videos specifically for that. In the on appearing of this page, I've implemented a little bit of code. Um, if there are no monkeys in our collection yet, then um, I will use that HTTP client and go to a um, monkeys collection that has been made available by James Montemagno. Uh, you probably know him if you've been looking at Xamarin stuff. Um, and he've put up this uh, static JSON file with a couple of monkeys that you can use for like these demo projects. He's using them for um, all his demo projects. So that is pretty cool. Actually, if I copy this and I go to a browser window right here and I paste it in there, you can see it redirects to a, a GitHub repository. And I will zoom that in for you a little bit. Here we go. And you can see it just outputs a bit of JSON data and it will give you uh, different kinds of monkeys with a latitude and longitude of where they uh, um, live and the name and the location, uh, some details and an image. So we're going to use the name and the image for now. Um, but, um, you know, you can do some fun stuff with if, this if you're trying out um, some API stuff in Xamarin form. So that is pretty cool. Now, if you go back to the code right here, um, it will get that static JSON as a string. Uh, convert that through the JSON convert, deserialize that into a list of monkeys. And then we loop through it and add the monkeys to our um, observable collection. We have to do that because uh, that's the way the observable collection works. And then it will show up in our app. So let's quickly see if we run this code, what will happen. Um, on the right, you can see the iOS simulator. So I'm just pressing the play button and it will start a debug session on my iOS simulator right here. And you can see, um, welcome to Xamarin Forms. Let's just actually um, fix that title right now. So this is going to be data templates sample. Here we go. Save that. And with hot reload, boom, you can see it automatically updates. Uh, but the more interesting thing is in our collection view, because you can see it 
got some data, but it's all this type of monkey. And actually, I didn't show you this, but I also created a uh, monkey class to accommodate for all that JSON that we just saw, which is right here, which has the same properties, the name, the location, details, etc., etc. But here on the right, in our collection view, you can see it just calls the two string. So, and the two string, uh, the default implementation of the two string is um, it will show the namespace and the the name of the object that is put in here. So. This is not the thing we want to see in a collection view, right? And this is where data templates come in. Here is where we are going to make our data look pretty. So the easiest thing we can do right now is to uh, stop running this here and then go into our monkey object and say override to string. And instead of just returning the to string of the object, we're going to say return name. Uh, so it returns the name of the monkey. And then when we run this, uh, we will see the same thing. But now instead of outputting like the namespace dot um, object name, it will actually output the name of the monkey. So, you know, at least we've won a little bit of something. We've uh, now been able to show the actual name of the monkey, but this still doesn't look very pretty. Um, so this, this is more functional, but it's not very pretty. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop this again, and I'm going to remove this to string because you know it's not going to serve any purpose. And let's go back to our main page example, actually right here. And in our collection view, I'm going to say, okay, I want to have a collection view dot item template. That's the, the property where our data templates can be defined. I'm going to define this data template here in line, but you can also do that in the um, embedded resources or you can um, even store them anywhere else. Um, I will show you in another video how to do that. It should pop up on your screen right now if you want to use uh, those resources for that. But like I said, I'm going to put it here in the uh, in line in this property directly. Inside of an item template, we can have this data template right here. And inside of this template, we can basically do anything. So um, what I can do right now is say I want to do a stack layout. So that just stacks the different elements inside of it um, horizontally or vertically. Let's do it actually um, horizontally. So we're going to do this and I'm going to do an image right here. And I'm going to say the source of this image is going to be the binding. Um, and that is going to be um, uh, a little bit funny. Uh, I also have a video on that. So that should pop on your screen right now. Uh, but the scope for this template has changed. So remember when I said the binding context is uh, for this whole page, whenever we uh, now get into this templates, the binding context will change change its scope and suddenly within this data template the scope of this template will be one monkey so not the the full page for this but it will be just one thing one monkey object in this or whatever you bind to this of course so suddenly we have access here to the um, properties that are in a monkey so for our image we are going to our monkey object and we are going to see uh, well it's called image so let's just take this one and we're going to say binding image and that should be that. And then to also show the name, let's put in a label here and set the text to that same binding thing. And we're going to say name uh, because that is also going to be a property of our monkey. Whoops, I need to close this label here. Uh, so this is going to be like another, this is this property from the monkey. So uh, the scope again of this template is going to be um, this, this monkey thing, simply because we set the item source to this thing. And then each item within the color collection um, um, of this source is going to be uh, represented by one instance of this template. So that is how that works. Uh, whenever we run this, then we should already see an image and the name um, popping up uh, horizontal from each other because of the stack layout. And um, basically, that is how you use data templates in like the uh, very simplest form. Uh, this, of course, doesn't really look like a nice design. Uh, so it's up to you to make it actually pretty. But this should give you like all the tools you need to work with data templates. Now, one important last note, uh, data templates are available in collection view, carousel view, um, basically all the controls that work with like collections of data. So also the list view. Uh, now, the list view is something that is kind of recommended against using right now. So you should shift to the collection view 
view, but if you still want or need to use a list view, then beware that the data template uh, in a list view should uh, have a root of a cell, so either a text cell or um, you know a, a view cell maybe, which is like the more generic one that you can um, uh, put your own layout inside of that. Um, if you don't do that, you will notice uh, automatically because it will throw an exception and it will not work. Um, but other than that, I think for all the other controls, you can just get that data template and um, start directly with your um, layout inside of that. And just like that, we've created a rich representation of this data items. Um, we are seeing lovely Moncrees all across the board with their name. Of course, we can put the description in there. Um, I leave it up to you to put in there everything that you want. Of course, take different bits of data. Um, you're probably not going to build an app that's going to show monkeys, although they are pretty cool, um, but you probably have another use case for that. Um, so there has been some data binding in here. Um, if that is something that you want to see more about, if you want to learn, if you're starting out with Xamarin Forms, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any other topics, of course, if you want me to prioritize your topics, um, look at the memberships because there is a tier that allows you to influence the uh, topics of my videos. Um, other than that, I can only say, please like this video. If you like this channel, and multiple videos, please just subscribe and ding that bell to be notified of new videos coming in automatically. And I'll be seeing you for my next video.